Hi, my name is Satal Patel, and I basically originated the Teams project idea, which is the Automate Football Throwing Machine, AFTM for short. What is the AFTM? The AFTM is basically a football passing machine that tracks a receiver while in motion and then propels the ball towards him. And every time, he will have an accurate and precise catch while in motion. Now, how does it do this? It does this by using a set of webcams and tracking software to deliver the ball right on target. This will be used for athletes such as running backs, receivers, tight ends, and even defensive backs within college, semi-pro, and even pro level. Even youths can use it. Now, in this video, we'll discuss our progress so far. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm Javier Liu, and I'm going to be working on the tracking portion of our code. And I'm Stephen Smith, and I'll be working on the distance acquisition of our code. So to start off, I just want to give, show you guys the actual code that I'm going to be working with. So as you can see right here on my computer, I'm highlighting over the code that we'll be mainly changing uh, for the tracking and for the, the distance. Right now, this image right here is what you see the camera tracking currently, which is our cameraman, Vernal. And at the moment, it's only given us one image, but what we need to do is we need to multiplex the camera so that it gives us two images like this, so, and it sends this single input to the, to the, the tracking, tracking and distance portion of our code so we can use this properly. And Stephen will be talking more about this now. Okay. With the, with the two dual images, we can then track, say for instance, this little object right here. And because the image is coming in twice, but there's a slight offset, we'll actually have two different reference angles. And by using the law of signs, we'll be able to measure the actual distance between our, our machine and this object that we're tracking. Our current program does not incorporate a distance algorithm, so that will definitely have to be added into our, our existing program. And then, once we've had that, we've acquired distance, we can then feed it to our, our microcontroller, which is programmed in here, and then we're going to um, use, uh, use that to control our digital potentiometer. And now the digital potentiometer, I'll hand that off to Hatal. Hi, my name is Hatal Patel, and here's one of the things I'm working on. Here we have a speed dial, which will allow us to control the ball's velocity in order for it to reach its target. Now, within the, within the speed dial, we have a 15K analog potentiometer. In order for us to control this, we will replace this potentiometer with a 20K digital potentiometer, which we have here. Here we have the AD5260 digital plot with 14 pins. Now, I soldered the TSSOP pins onto a host board with DIP headers. So various pins will be connected to the speed dial as well as other pins will be connected to an Arduino. So this will allow us to control the speed at which the ball will reach its target. So now we'll give you a quick demonstration of the machine in progress. Hey guys, we want to give you an outside demonstration of our progress so far on our project. Yunel is going to explain a little bit more. All right, so so far this is what our project, prototype of our project will look like. This is the base that we constructed, which I will discuss furthermore within the shop. But this is where the machine will be mounted on, and it will be able to rotate and track its user, and the ball will be launched from there. Now, Verna will run out, and I will demonstrate to you the ball being launched. Hi guys, we brought you inside to give you a closer look at our project's progress so far. My name is Vernal Green, this is Itam Patel, and this is Yonel Jovain. Us three together, as a part of Team AFTM, Team 16, we were overall responsible for the hardware and the, how the ball will be launched and propelled at its target. What, what Yonel will explain is the parts that he was responsible for, and then Itam will explain the parts that he was responsible for, and I will explain what I was responsible for. First, let's start off with Yonel. Hi, I'm Yunel Jovan, and as I discussed earlier, here is the platform that we will have for our machine. Here we have a cart, which will allow this machine to be mobile. Next, we did, I just redesigned this platform base here at this particular height to allow clearance for this shaft right here on the machine to allow it to rotate freely. 
Next, we're, we're gonna create a hole here and we're gonna attach a servo motor underneath here where we're gonna attach this machine on top of this platform. Next, we're gonna have the towel we'll go into more detail. Thank you, Joe. So, what, we have, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a half an inch thick plate. In the plate, we're gonna have eight holes drilled through it. And then we're gonna attach six millimeter bolts that will go straight through it, and it will attach to the servo motor underneath. That will allow the, the plate to rotate. Um, then we'll weld the plate onto the base of the jet machine. And then underneath the base, Underneath the plate, we'll have a lazy susan, which will allow, will evenly distribute the jet machine weight, so it will freely rotate. Next, Bernal will discuss this part. Hi guys, again, my name is Ronald Green. As you can see in the demonstration that we did earlier, a little bit earlier in this video, we had to manually push this loading slot through the tires for the ball to be fired at the start. What Team 16 proposes is to use something called a linear actuator, which is something like a motor, which by, we will remotely press a button and will push the ball through the tires and it will be fired at its target. And it will, it will be attached underneath and it will, it, the, the, the linear actuator will push through the, 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 the tires to launch the ball at its target. We will, attach the linear actuator right here with, with some C clamps and then the, the actual will push out when we press our remote and the ball will be pushed through the tires. That is our method of firing the ball at its target. This was our demonstration video. We spoke to you about the hardware, how the ball will be propelled at its target. We also explained to you how we will use our coding to, to determine how to track the user that, that will be catching the ball and also how to get the distance measurement. We spoke to you about how we will change the, the, the speed dial to, to determine what's at what speed we need to fire the ball to, to make sure, ensure that we get it directly to the target at a place where the user can catch the ball. We appreciate you for watching our first progress report video. Thank you.